He went through with as fine a tooth comb as you can imagine. Today we're going to talk about the Mustang cowl vents. On the early Mustangs, these were actually a real problem. The way these were designed is something you really need to know about. Uh, if you're going to purchase an early Mustang, you need to know about this because actually the whole structural integrity of the car uh, can be in question due to this design and uh, the rust that results from it. Uh, just briefly, your, your air intake through here, and then on either side you've got a, um, I'll show you a, a picture of it, you've got a, a, a cylinder on each side, kind of like a top hat. The one on the right hand side of the car goes to a heater box, and then the one on the uh, left hand side of the car is mirror image and it goes to a fresh air event. So let's go inside the car and uh, we'll get uh, some more information on this. Now I'm going to uh, break this video down into a few parts. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is to go a little bit more into the uh, design of uh, the cowl and the, the air intake on here and why it's such a problem. And uh, so we'll talk uh, some more about that. And then uh, after that, I'm going to explain, um, you know, determining how serious the, the situation is with the rust and the damage and the different approaches that you might take. And then uh, finally, I'll, I'll explain in more detail what I've chosen to do on my car here. And uh, all of this will give you information that will help you determine on your car what uh, what you want to do. So uh, first, let's talk about the design. Then let's go into that a little bit and why it's such a problem uh, on these cars, and uh, you know, uh, make such a serious uh, rust problem. Now here's a good view of what it looks like underneath the cowl. Now. In this particular view, this is on the driver's side by the fresh air vent. And so you can see this whole area here, because your um, uh, the drain would be right about here, there's an opening that the water will pour down here and then behind the fender then down to the floor. But all in here, you can see how the leaves and the dirt and everything will collect in here and then the water and, the and that'll hold the moisture so everything will, will pool in here and then if you look here you see how this is this uh, like a top hat the cylinder here is uh, spot welded to the cowl and from you know the factory they don't really put seam seal or anything around there and uh, so what a um, perfect place for rust to start you know you've got this top hat welded to the um, upper cowl and you can see a little bit here see here's that inner lip so the actual cowl before they weld this top hat on there the actual lower cowl has this lip here and so they're just setting this down on there and then uh, you know, spot welding it on, and then so when this starts to rust here, and then the water gets in, it'll get behind this lip too, all in here, and so you know the the cylinder itself starts to rust, and then this base around here can all rust out. You know, some of these cars you see, this whole area will actually be gone. You know. And of course, the big thing with this design uh, is the domino effect of it all because now you get water on the floor, the front floor, and so your carpet's wet and it's wet underneath the carpet and that goes on. And so then the floor rusts out from the inside. And then, you know, if this is let go long enough, the... Um, even the torque boxes and everything under the floor and the, the front uh, frame piece that supports the, the floor 
all that will rust out and so you know you see these cars that have sat outside in the fields and stuff and, and everything's gone I mean once it starts the rust can move quickly but on the on the other hand not just you know these those cars but um, you know some people will do a half restoration on these cars you might see a beautiful early Mustang convertible you know nice paint nice body panels and they didn't really give this any attention and this in here is all rusted out because nobody can see it because the uh, you can't see it from the top because you've got your upper cowl on it and then sh short of taking some of the car apart on the inside you're not going to see it either you know because it's up on the above the heater box on the passenger side and there's that uh, vent here but that's an area you don't but you could you know if you if you poke around up there with a flashlight and stuff even with the car still put together you, you might get an idea so that's something to really look for on um, you know before you buy a Mustang that can look nice but boy you can have some expensive um, time-consuming repairs that take care of under there and this is suspect then you got to figure on any early Mustang this is suspect you know my car came from California but it's, it's you know it's 52 years old and um, so it's very solid even up here but even on a car like that you know, it, it had collected leaves and things up there, and it did have some rust. Not very extensive, you know, savable, you know, thankfully. But, um, you know, anyway, so it shows you how this design then, you know, is, is poor from that aspect because it's a perfect place for rust to start, and it's not a simple repair. So, in, uh, Cleaning out the cowl, I'll, I'll take my uh, air nozzle and blow compressed air through here. And you can angle this pretty well back toward the, the hat, toward the uh, vent intake there, and blow this all out. And as you blow it toward here, the, um, some of it will come out the, the uh, drain that's designed into the cowl that's behind the fender. And then a lot of it will actually fall down through the the opening uh, of the air intake uh, into the heater box and um, so do this for for both sides I've also got an attachment like this that I can add on there and get a little more angle and then I'll show you from the inside that it's not enough to get it from here but to get all the leaves and everything out of there I'll also go up inside the the vent itself from inside the car and do the same thing, blow it out from there. And uh, you'd be amazed at the amount of leaves and seeds and, and dirt, really. Uh, when I did my 67 Mustang here, you know, 50 years, I, I doubt, uh, over 50 years of dirt in there, I doubt it was ever cleaned out. Even though it was from California, there wasn't a ton of leaves and stuff, but it was really quite a bit of, of dirt and everything uh, in there. So that's a, a key step is is getting all the debris out of there. Okay, from inside the car, as far as cleaning out the cowl, see I've got uh, an attachment on my um, air gun that I've bent at an angle, and so I can actually put that up above the, the lip on the cylinder and blow the air all the way around especially back here uh, towards the rear of the car it really likes to get the dirt there and then uh, as I blow it it'll get any of that debris that's right around the cone lo loose and, and get it out of there now it'll come right down here inside the car and it'll also go out the uh, the drain vent outside and so just repeat a few times you know go up to the air intakes on the top and blow your air in there and then uh, come inside here and do it again from in here and after, you'll see after a while you'll stop getting any dirt or debris out and you'll know that you've got it uh, nice and clean. Now this gives you an idea of when you're cleaning that out with the air what's happening you know the drain opening will be here and you're blowing in through the top vents up here and so a lot of it will come out here and drop on the ground and a lot of it will fall down through here to the interior of the car 
and um, also you can visualize what I showed with the um, my air nozzle coming up from the inside and blowing around here and everything and stirring all that stuff up. You keep stirring it up and it'll fall through here or it'll go out here. But very important, get all that dirt out of there. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, determining the situation as far as uh, the rust and, this, and then what approaches might follow uh, after that assessment, after you assess the, the condition. Now, uh, first of all on mine I found, uh, you can't see it here because it's back toward the passenger side, but I found by poking around up there I found a few small holes in the cylinder where the rust had penetrated from the outside and so that would result in a you know in a water leak into your interior now this car really is very solid being from California because it really doesn't take much for these to rust and uh, seen some really very nice looking cars that are all rotted out in here because uh, once it starts it can spread pretty quickly so uh, basically I started with pretty solid situation here and so I'm I'm choosing to uh, simply repair the rust holes and then do a number of uh, important steps to preserving it so that I don't have a reoccurrence of the problem here and then that this car would never have to have that major surgery where you've got to take the cowl apart you know I'm determined to prevent that uh, and I'll show you, I came up with a few neat ideas, I think, as far as that preservation goes, especially at the end of the video. I'll show you one that I haven't seen anywhere else on YouTube. Um, nobody else seems to have come up with that idea, um, as far as I can tell, but I think it's the ultimate solution uh, to prevent reoccurrence of a rust in this area. Now let's break down a little further the various situations you might come across. Now, if it happens that the car you're working on is similar to mine or even a little more extensive but if this this area here around the base is is solid there's uh, a temporary fix that uh, I'll talk about just for a couple minutes that I'm not real hot on it but there may be uh, situations that that uh, it's the way to go but it involves a plastic um, kit. They make the kit's about 30 bucks. It comes with a pair of inserts for here and a tube of RTV and basically you put a bead of RTV around the circumference there and you and you glue the the plastic insert there and it, it's to prevent a water leak. So let, we'll just talk about that for a couple minutes now. So here on the CJ Pony Parts site this is the uh those that kit that I was talking about with the plastic ones and the and the RTV. Um, so just talking a little bit more about that. Uh, I can see maybe if it's not too badly rusted and just a temporary repair to keep the water out of your car, and you know you're going to get to it. But here's why: as a, as a more permanent repair, I think it's a bad idea because when you put this, this goes in from the inside and you RTV it up in there. Now, you know, picturing how that cowl is designed, anytime the water comes in there now, where is it going to go? It's going to be even, it's going to rust even faster, in my opinion, because it's going to be trapped in there. You know, the, the water is going to come in. Between this plastic, you've got the, the old metal um, part there, and that's filling up with, with water and it's just going to rust faster and faster because it's not going to dry out and uh, so from that standpoint I don't like it I could see it if you know as a temporary fix maybe um, you want to stop the water from getting in your car and it'll you know if you're not too badly rusted you'll do that clean up the surface nice use the RTV 
and pop those in there and it doesn't take very long either you know it's just you got to take out your heater box and on the other side you got to take out your fresh air vent uh, to do it um, so it's a, a real temporary fix though but it'll keep the water out of your car you know for a while um, but all the time that it's in there in my mind it's going to rust out even faster and make a bigger repair so I, I really don't like it and that's why on mine I'm not going to use it because mine's not too badly rusted I feel much better about um, fixing the leak myself and without trapping any water in there with those that's just my opinion on that but I'd like to show it just because it gives you it gives you another option uh, something that you might consider in certain situations you know it's just good to have the information now if the rust is more extensive here which as I mentioned many of them this is just like disappeared but if it's fairly extensive here and you can't get away with what I'm gonna do on my car here which I'll explain a little bit later but um, they make patch panels that short of replacing the whole uh, lower cowl um, and so we'll talk about that a little bit for the next uh, few minutes uh, what situations that might um, be a good idea and uh, what the best approach on that is now here's a view of one of those patch panels and uh, you wouldn't necessarily use the whole thing but this gives you an idea Now this Chris, Chris the Doc in Ingra, Gracia um, channel on YouTube. He's got uh, he just does Mustangs, and he's got a nice video on um, how you can do a less invasive repair and use these patch panels. What he does, he cuts uh, an opening to get some access and then you work, do a lot of the work from inside the car but he, he cuts away part of the upper cowl that's under the fender you know you have the fender off and uh, so it's an area that's not visible but you can you can cut it open and then and then re-weld it um, it's, it's a lot of work but it's less work than um, you know replacing the whole thing now of course the other option is if it's real rusty uh, and you've got the ability or you're willing to pay for it, it's a big job, but uh, the windshield's got to come out of the car and uh, the whole upper cowl's got to be removed, all the uh, spot wells drilled out, and then the whole uh, lower cowl here would have to be removed, and it's a huge job because it's welded to everything. It's a major structural uh, structural part of the car but uh, Dynacorn um, perhaps other um, makers available but they do sell aftermarket lower cowl sections to be welded in and uh, so let's talk about that uh, just a little bit more for a few minutes now one of the reasons it's such a big job if you're going to replace the uh, the lower cowl section that has the uh, fresh air vents in it is because this this upper cowl is welded and you've got to remove the windshield is a spot welded all across there and then of course it's welded across the front and um, so it's a major uh, structural undertaking you've got to re remove the upper uh, cowl and then the uh, lower cowl is welded to everything so it's really a big job to undertake. Now in some cases uh, it's something that you really will need to do if the rust is extensive enough. Now an excellent site to get information on the full cowl replacement is uh, Joe Daddy's Garage on YouTube and uh, here on his playlist for the 65 Mustang he's got the cowl and firewall parts 1 and part 2 so you get quite a information, bit of information there on uh, replacing the complete cowl.
Okay, now I'm going to talk about the approach that I've chosen on uh, my car. I've mentioned a little bit about it. I found you know, a few small holes where the rust had worked its way through from the outside. And uh, so what I've done is, uh, the first step, I, I ground those down. Uh, you know, ground, just cleaned up this whole area nice, especially around this, this seam here uh, with a wire wheel. You know, wire wheel like this on my drill worked nice to get in there and clean that up nice. And then what I did is, um, you can see a bit of it here. This is actually JB Weld, which the original formula JB Weld, the, the stuff that, uh, you know, takes like a full, not the quick weld, but the stuff that takes like 24 hours uh, to harden completely. It's just fantastic stuff. Um, so anyways, I took that and went all around this this seam here and sealed up the the holes, the, the few holes that I located there um, as a first step. You know, on the bare metal after I ground it down, I used the JB Weld first of all on the seam here. And then, um, you can't see it now because I've got it coated with, uh, with primer, but then I, I took POR 15, the paint over rust 15, that black paint, which uh, you're likely familiar with. That stuff uh, hardens like a rock and really seals up the metal well. And so I took that and really put it on thick. I, I let it drain down into the, the seam here and completely coated it. And I, I put a couple coats on. Now, let me show you a little uh, trick with that as far as because you you know you can't of course paint on the outside of the cylinder but let me show you what I did with that on this visual it gives an idea hope what I was hoping to achieve by taking my paintbrush and taking the POR 15 and, and scraping my paintbrush along the top rim here from the inside of the car that it would drip down the outside of the hat here and then also get over the top of of this um, seam here to help really seal up and prevent the future rust. So with my paintbrush with the uh, POR 15 on it, I would put it up along the that top uh, lip of the cylinder, and then you know pull it down so that the the paint would come off the the top of the brush and run down the outside of the cylinder. And I tried to do that uh, liberally all the way around. I did it a number of times so that the POR15 would be running down the outside of the cylinder. Of course, you can't see it because it's all covered up there, but uh, you know, I did it enough that I'd be pretty confident that I got a pretty good coverage. So not only will it will it seal the outside of the cylinder when it if you put it on liberally enough, it'll drip down to the base and you know that's above here where you're your, your um, spot welds are for the cylinder and you know hopefully get enough of that to penetrate around there to help seal that up from the outside um, so that's what I did with the POR 15 just you know slide it down the the edge there like kind of like you were cleaning your brush off and then that that paint will come right out of the brush and go down the the side, and so I did that all the way around. So again, BUR15, a couple coats, and doing that also, and got that all nice and done. Then, um, interesting thing, this is important with the POR15, if you let it completely cure, and it's rock hard and shiny, if you're going to top coat it, which I think is a good idea to top coat it because it's, it's sensitive to, to UV rays and I think it's just good extra insurance on something like this. You know, I want to go the extra mile. But anyways, to top coat it, since it's, it's uh, rock hard like that, if you want the paint to adhere to it, you know, once it's fully cured, you're going to have to scuff it up really well. And then even then it may not, it, you don't want it flaking off your top coat. Um, so the way around that, there's a, a two to six hour window after when the... Um, POR15 is, is dried to that point 
after two hours, they say on the on the can, between two to six hours, it's just like slightly tacky still, like you could drag your finger across it. Um, then you can top coat it without having to sand it or anything, and the, the top coat will adhere nicely. So that's what I did here. You know, I didn't wait till it dried rock hard. I, I, within that window, I, I took my brush and uh, used this nice uh, Rust-Oleum primer. Did the same thing, so I, I, I top coated all the POR15, and same thing, can run the brush to try to get it to drip down the outside of the cone, and maybe puddle a little bit inside there. Uh, too, to add another extra level of insurance. And um, so now at this point, we've got the JB Weld Repair on the bare metal. We've got the POR 15, a couple coats. And then, then we've got a top coat of, of Rust Oleum Primer over that. And then I'm not done yet because, uh, you know, this is something to really take seriously on this car. You know, as we explained at the outset with the design, the water gets in the car here on the floor, rusts your floor out. You know, and you see these cars that have been sitting outside, and then the floor rusts out, and the water gets uh, in the torque box, and it gets in the uh, the actual frame member that's under the floor, and everything rots out, and you've got to basically rebuild the car. And a lot of it starts right up here in these cowls. So I'm not fooling around. I'm going to, you know, since this one was in basically good shape, but the rust was starting, which I don't know if you could ever, you can find one of these that it hasn't, but um, really overall solid. So I'm determined to preserve the original uh, structure of the car. So, anyways, um, going on to the next step. What I'm going to do here is uh, all around this seam, especially around the seam and up a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to uh, use seam sealer all around this part that likes to to rust. And a couple reasons for that is well the extra insurance, but also just in case you know I, it's hard to see back here. You know I can see with the mirror, but. Um, if by any chance that there's any little perforations or anything that are still there, then you know the seam sealer is going to have that completely sealed up, so no water is going to get through. So I like I like the extra insurance. I'm going to put I'm going to put seam sealer around here. I'm going to do that now, and then uh, finally, after I do that, I'm going to top coat everything in here with. Um, the, I like the rust oleum, the the um, semi gloss black, as a nice final step of of sealing it up here. Now I love this uh, this 3M auto body sealant, 8500. Uh, it's an excellent seam sealer, and you know you use the uh, the caulk gun. But, you know, just take your finger and even, it might even help sometimes they say if you wet your finger. But uh, I'd like to just smear it with my finger. So I'm going to liberally smear it around here now, around this area. Okay, you see there I've put a liberal amount of uh, seam sealer all around there, paying particular attention to the seam there. And that's a little extra insurance. And I'll just let that dry, you know, over a couple days, let the, the seam sealer set up there. And then I'll be all ready for the final top coat of uh, the semi-gloss black I'll put on there. And then, uh, and then yeah, that'll be it. You know, put the final seal on there. And then I've got that uh, last little uh, step that I believe is the ultimate. Uh, solution to rust in these cowls. It's a little messy, but I like the idea. So let me show you that. Now my idea here with the 
uh, final step in the preservation of, of this after I'm all done with everything is uh, pouring used motor oil down through the vent. Now there's a a slight curve to the, the cowl underneath there just kind of mirrors the curve that's on uh, the upper cowl here. So if you pour the oil down here you're actually uh, quite near the the hat, the uh, air intakes right here, basically, and uh, so my idea is is to first of all take clean used motor oil, you know, filter this, run it through a filter and a screen to make sure you don't have any junk in there. But I'll pour that in there fast enough that um, it won't run down the other side because I I going to take care of that separately but um, pour it in here fast enough that the oil will get some height to it around the um, you know the, the air intake uh, let's say cone but around the air in, intake uh, cylinder you know that top hat let that whole area it'll fill up and then It'll pour out the. You can't see it here because with the fender on, but the the um, drain for the cowl is here. So if you've got a pan under the car in this section here, it'll catch the oil as it's as it's draining. So I have a, a large enough uh, oil pan under there. So what I'm going to do is I'll you know pour the used motor oil in here, and as I said, quickly enough that I'll get some height to it because you want you want to preserve get that oil on any of the rust that's already started on that um, on the cylinder there and let it penetrate and soak in there and that way you know whatever rust has already taken place which you guarantee you on these Mustangs uh, that will be the case there'll be some rust there's already starting the idea is that um, Rust needs to have uh, moisture and it needs to have air. And if if something is sealed with oil, you know, if the metal is sealed with sealed with oil, it just won't be able to continue rusting. Even even the part that's already rusted, the, it will stop the rust at that at that point. So my idea is periodically, maybe every couple of years, to rust proof it that way. And to in my, to my mind, that is. I would say the only guarantee, because since you, short of you know taking your cowl apart and getting in there and uh, treating it that way, there's no way to guarantee that you're not getting some rust uh, around that cone. So um, yeah, so that's my idea. I think it's kind of unique. Some might object to it because they might think it's messy or that the uh, oil in there could attract more debris and everything but that's another issue you know I'm not really worried about that now here's a view where you can see with my oil idea you can see the curve here how the center is raised up so when I pour my oil there it'll run down in here as I mentioned pouring it quickly enough so that it'll come down here and, 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 and rise up a bit and get up you know maybe get up an inch or, or two up on the side of the of the cylinder and then um, get a good soaking and then as I mentioned your uh, drain opening is right here and it'll drop it drops straight to the ground behind the, the fender there so you have your pan to collect your oil but this gives you a nice visual of what's going on inside there where you can't see it but again my idea that that oil coating provide a nice, nice rust proofing so as a final thing you know I, I talked about that rust proofing procedure you know using the uh, used motor oil and thoroughly um, soaking the area up here of the vent um, one way to, to keep the debris out of here, if, if uh, you go to any of the Mustang uh, parts sites, 
there's different varieties available, but they make um, covers for these. You know, I don't particularly like how they look or anything. I think they've got chrome ones and different things. Uh, but they're made to fasten using the, the vent openings, and you can tighten them down, and they'll seal up here, and they'll keep the water and the leaves and the debris out of there. So a neat idea, if you've got to park your car outside, uh, I would definitely have something to keep the water from going in here and the leaves and everything else. Um, so that's kind of a final step to keep you know, the junk out of there is uh, extra insurance. So to sum up the steps that I've taken is uh, you know, I assessed the condition, uh, found the, the rust, and I was able to wire wheel it down to the metal. Uh, also metal prep it and then uh, put the JB weld in the holes and also around the, the seam here. Then I did a couple coats of POR15 and uh, paying special attention to try to get it over the lip of the air intake so that it hopefully covers the outside of the of the cylinder and also the base around the outside of the cylinder where the where the rust starts and then uh, followed the POR15 with a with a top coat of uh, primer within the uh, two to six hour uh, gap there where we're here without having to, to sand it or anything and then after your primer dries your top coat of primer then using seam sealer put that liberal amount of that all around your weld seam there and the inside of the cylinder and then after that sets up finally there'll be a top coat of uh, a semi gloss black as a, a final seal on it and then finally doing the oil treatment in the cowl is uh, the final ultimate insurance against rust. As I mentioned earlier, rust needs moisture and it needs air in order to um, continue to rust. So if you can seal it with oil, um, you're blocking out the moisture and you're blocking out the air. And, and whatever stage that rust is at, if you can get it soaked with the oil, and then treat it perhaps periodically um, it's not going to rust anymore and so if you've got your leak fixed and you got your rust stopped you're good to go and I'm really happy with the way it came out of my car because I love being able to preserve the original metal you know such a rare thing these days um, you know why get into all that major structural welding with those uh, Dynacorn parts that don't always fit quite right. Uh, if you can preserve, you know, preserve the original metal with a minimum of repair. The same thing I've been able to do on the floors on this car. I'm, I'm just so happy to be able to have, you know, the original floors, the original, the original structural uh, metal preserved. And, and then in this important cowl area to have that treated. So as usual, um, covering it with as uh, fine a tooth comb as you can imagine you know maybe too much information for some but uh, I think it gives a great overall view of everything and uh, will equip you with the information you need and uh, if you need more extensive repairs it'll point you in the right direction of, of the guys that have, can do you know a real good job with that such as uh, Joe Daddy's Garage um, he does an excellent job uh, with the um, replacing the the complete cowls and a good job of demonstrating that. So I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, uh, you can give me a thumbs up and I appreciate that. So I hope the video has been helpful and, and thanks for watching.